Thank you. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to engage in a colloquy with Senator John McCain. Uh, without objection. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I rise today uh, to talk about the state of affairs and where we are in the Senate, particularly with regard to the defense authorization bill. Uh, right now in the Senate, uh, I'm a freshman member of this body. It's been over two years since we passed a budget. We've only passed one appropriations bill. Last week, the Democrats changed the rules in the Senate because they didn't want to vote on amendments. And for the first time in my lifetime, the defense authorization bill is not being brought to the floor by the majority leader. This is at a time when we are engaged in two wars and the threats to us and our allies from the Islamist terrorists remain. In fact, today, authorities broke up an alleged plot to bomb the Israeli and Saudi Arabian embassies in Washington and to assassinate the Saudi Arabian ambassador to the United States. And why, at a time like this, when there is nothing more important than we can do in the United States Senate than to ensure the national security of the American people, the majority leader is refusing to bring forward the defense authorization to this floor because he objects to one provision in it, addressing detainees. I'm concerned that this is no longer the most deliberative body in the world. And I'm new here, and I'm often asked, as a new member of this body, what has surprised me most as a new senator. And I have to say, honestly, how few votes that I've taken since I've been in the U.S. Senate. In fact, the number of votes that I've taken in the U.S. Senate since I've been here are far below what we took last year and what we took the year before. And yet the problems that our country faces and on issues like this in terms of our national security, what could be more important than voting on a defense authorization bill? I would ask my distinguished colleague from Arizona, who is a senior member of this body, have you ever seen the Senate like this? Is this is how the Senate is supposed to operate? I'd like to respond to my colleague and by the way, I noticed she said that it would be the first time in her lifetime that we had not passed a uh, defense authorization bill. It would not be the first time in my lifetime, but <laughs> the, uh, since it's been 41 years. But uh, I'd say to my friend uh, uh, and colleague uh, who has uh, played a very uh, important and essential role uh, on many of the issues before the Armed Services Committee, not only because of the background, the military background of your family, um, including a husband who is a distinguished A-10 pilot, but also as a former attorney general of your state and very familiar with many of these issues that surround the detainee issue. And I would like to say uh, to my uh, colleague that it was her amendments that were passed in the committee uh, concerning detainee treatment that became part of the legislation that I believe the legislation, that section was passed by a, bill, by a vote of 25 to 1 in the, in the committee. So it's not as if there were sharp divisions uh, between both sides of the aisle on the issue of detainee treatment. And yet, apparently, that seems to be the objection of the administration to uh, not only to the bill, but even taking up the bill for consideration before the full Senate. As the senator from New Hampshire pointed out, first time in 41 years. And I just want to explore with her for a second this whole issue of, uh, of detainee treatment. Um, just in the last week or so, uh, we were able to kill one of the al-Qaeda leading uh, operatives, and that um, action was supported by, I think, a majority of opinion in America, thanks to passage of legislation that uh, after 9-11, including the fact that the president had a finding that this individual was a terrorist. Uh, and yet, somehow, the president's counterterrorism expert seems to say that, that, uh, that 
under our legislation, we would never be able to turn the page on Guantanamo. And I quote from his speech in Harvard, and he went on to say, our counterterrorism professionals would be compelled to hold all captured terrorists in military custody. First of all, I'd ask my, my colleague, is, number one, isn't there a national security waiver that the president could exercise if he wanted to in the legislation? And second of all, is it not true that, it, that you would have to be designated al-Qaeda before it would be required to be held in military custody? So is, my question is, is Mr. Brennan either misinformed or um, simply uh, contradicting what is actually the case in the legislation that we passed by a, a unanimous vote through the uh, Senate Armed Services Committee? Uh, Senate, Senator McCain, uh, first of all, you're absolutely right. This was a overwhelming bipartisan vote in support of the detainee provisions that now are, according to Senator Reid, is why they're not being brought forward to the floor. And uh, in my view, the president's counterterrorism advisor, Mr. Brennan, has it wrong. I'm not sure that he's read this legislation uh, based on the objections that he's raised because we are giving the president authority to detain, uh, which is very important authority, which he can exercise based on the national security of this country. And in order to have military custody, you have to be a member of Al Qaeda or an affiliated force and planning an attack against us or our coalition partners. That's where the mandatory, where the military custody comes in place. And uh, I think that's very important because, of course, if you're a member of Al Qaeda and you're planning attack against the United States of America or our coalition partners, uh, it seems to me that's a very appropriate instance for military custody, uh, given that we remain at war with Al Qaeda and that the threats from Al Qaeda are still very grave to our country. Uh, as demonstrated uh, could by... I ask my colleague, so the statement that Mr. Brennan made in his speech on September 16th at the Harvard Law School saying our counterterrorism professionals would be compelled to hold all captured terrorists in military custody is not correct? Uh, Senator McCain, I, I, I'm, I'm really concerned that... Uh, Mr. Brennan, again, has not read this legislation because that statement is not correct. Uh, we, as you know, you work very hard on a compromise uh, with the chairman of the Armed Services Committee, uh, Chairman Levin, and Senator Graham. And in that compromise provision that we passed uh, in a very strong, overwhelming bipartisan vote, uh, to have military custody, you have to be a member of al-Qaeda and planning attack against the, us or our coalition partners. It's limited to a very narrow category of dangerous, dangerous individuals. It isn't every single terrorist that is encountered. Uh, but the important issue is this, you know, Senator uh, McCain, when you read Mr. Brennan's speech, did you see anywhere in his speech to Harvard where he talked about this topic, where he ever mentioned what is happening with those that have been released from Guantanamo. You know, it's interesting that he didn't because those who have been released as the latest numbers that I have is about a 20 percent uh, roughly. And I, I don't know if the senator from New Hampshire's information is different, but at least 21 out of every five have returned to the fight. And some of them in leadership positions of al Qaeda, which is obviously unacceptable. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, Mr. President, I ask for additional three minutes for uh, a senator f uh, from New Hampshire and me. Without objection. I, I just wanted to mention very quickly because uh, in some respects, the senator from New Hampshire comes from a military family. Isn't it true that in this legislation, and it's so important that we care for the men and women in the form of pay raises, in the, co in the form of housing, in the form of benefits, in the form of uh, of all of the things that is Congress's obligation to the men and women who are serving in the military, and now we are telling those men and women, well, because of one provision in this legislation, which should be resolved through debate and amendments and votes, 
We're not going to take up the bill that authorizes the men and women, uh, uh, the things that are necessary and vital for the men and women who are fighting in two wars. Senator McCain, you're absolutely right. It's, out, it's outrageous that one provision that was a bipartisan provision is holding up uh, the authorization from coming forward when it addresses things like pay raises for our military. It addresses uh, services for our wounded warriors. It addresses military construction uh, that is needed for our soldiers. Very important issues. And to hold up this at a time when we're at war, at a time when our soldiers need to know that we are fully behind them, in my view, uh, does a huge disservice to our country. And these are issues that, if there are problems with the detainee provisions, should be fully debated on this floor. The American people deserve to know, as you mentioned, the recidivism rate from Guantanamo. Uh, Director Clapper testified before the Intelligence Committee recently that the recidivism rate is actually now 27 percent. For those who are re-engaging in the battle, uh, our detainees that we've released who are encountering our soldiers and our coalition partners trying to harm Americans. So to not bring forward the defense authorization bill, A, to help our soldiers, most importantly, to do what is right for them, but also B, to have a rigorous debate over this very important issue of uh, protecting our soldiers from those detainees that have gotten back and making sure that we, ha we are protecting those that are captured. We have a place to put those who are captured now. It seems to me to be a disservice uh, to this body and to our country. Well, I thank the senator from New Hampshire who has uh, played a, a very important role in the Defense uh, in the Armed Services Committee, particularly on these issues of detainee treatment, which are important to the American people, as she just mentioned. One out of four have returned to the fight. It's a red badge. It's a badge of courage and legitimacy and leadership now in al-Qaeda for someone who has uh, been released from Guantanamo. I hope that the majority leader and uh, the urging of our colleagues would agree that we could uh, sit down and uh, bring this bill to the floor, have votes, amendments, and then let the men and women who are serving and those who have served, including our wounded warriors, so know that we care enough to pass legislation that is vital to their ability to defend this nation and to make sure that they are properly equipped and properly compensated. I thank the Senator from New Hampshire. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I thank very much the Senator from Arizona. And uh, no one has been more dedicated to our military through his own service and the service of his family but also as ranking member of the Armed Services Committee who has worked across the aisle to bring forward this defense authorization. And I would just share in his comments that I hope the majority leader will bring this forward. It's so important for our country. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I, uh, I yield the floor.